little over two years ago now, in May of 2021, Apple introduced the M1 iPad Pro, and it is the most impressive iPad I've ever owned, and also the most disappointing computer that I've ever owned. So today we're going to talk about it. Let's dive in. Hi, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah. This was the original video I had planned for this week, um, but some things changed. So we're gonna talk about that instead. So yeah, the plan for this week was to talk about my experience with the M1 iPad Pro because, well, it was disappointing because I bought my iPad Pro with the M1 chip to replace my MacBook Pro. And my original thoughts were that with Apple putting this impressive kind of hardware inside of a tablet, we were eventually going to get professional applications from their Mac lineup ported over to this iPad. Well, two years later, that had never happened, and so I figured I'm gonna make a full video talking about how disappointed I am that chiefly among the apps I was complaining about, Final Cut and Logic Pro had not made their way to the iPad Pro yet, and it seemed as though they never would. Until today, at time of recording, we now have an announcement from Apple that Final Cut and Logic are coming to the iPad Pro on the 23rd of this month. So they outdated my video before I even got a chance to post it, which makes me very unhappy, but I'm also very happy that Final Cut's showing up on the iPad Pro. Well, now to be clear, I am happy about it, yes, but there are a few things I noticed during the announcement video and from reading over some of the documentation that has me concerned, some things that I do just kind of find irritating, and some things that I will just have to personally experience first before I can make any solid thoughts on it. So today we're gonna to talk about all of that and what I'm looking forward to. So let's dive in. So first off, Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro are now coming to the iPads, but the iPads you can run those apps on are different. So Logic Pro seems to be the one that is not nearly as demanding, so you can run it on any A12 or later models, which I'm actually really excited to try running Logic Pro on my iPad mini. The iPad mini is such a great little tablet. You can check out the video I made over there about it. I talked about how it's sort of the last true iPad, but I do want to try running Logic Pro on it. It should just be fun. And actually, I think it was Luke Miani who pointed out that you can run this version of Logic Pro on the eighth generation of Apple's base model iPad. That'll be kind of interesting to see. I'm actually really excited to see some YouTubers try that out. I don't have one of those iPads, so I won't be able to test it out, but it'll be cool to see Either way, Logic Pro is gonna be the most simple of the applications to use because it can actually run on A-series processors from Apple, whereas Final Cut requires M-series processors only. So either the M1 iPad Pros, the M2 iPad Pros, or the M1 iPad Air. Now on the surface, I can understand why some YouTubers are probably upset that this version of Final Cut won't run on an A-series chip, especially considering Apple's developer transition kit was running an A-series chip, and that was running full Mac OS with Final Cut. However, there do seem to be a few features exclusive to this version of Final Cut that very heavily leverage the neural engine found in Apple's M-series processors. So it is kind of unfortunate that you can't run this on an A-series chip, but it does seem like this new version, exclusive to the M processors, does actually give you some genuine advantages with this processor. But whether you're looking more into running Logic or Final Cut, both are now on the iPad, which means that Apple, making sure that the iPad is still a touch-first device with the option for a keyboard and mouse, have basically made the entire interface for both applications fully touch-friendly. And there are actually some pretty cool things in there that I was not expecting, so we're gonna talk about that stuff now. Starting out with Final Cut Pro, it's actually kind of cool that they have made the hover function on the new M2 chip something that is used for scrubbing your timeline with the playhead. And if you don't have the hover function with the Apple Pencil and you have, you know, my M1 iPad, you can actually scrub through the timeline with a little wheel, sort of reminiscent of the zoom wheel in the camera on the iPhone. Granted, I kind of assume that you can also just grab the playhead and drag it with your finger or scroll back and forth with the mouse because this does support mouse and keyboard functionality with third-party or first-party accessories. That's good because I can't function with Final Cut without using key commands, so I'm probably never going to take this iPad out of its dock or take it off of its keyboard case when I'm using Final Cut. That's just not going to happen because I need, I need key commands. <laughs> But if you are one of those people who likes to leverage the touch-first interface of the iPad Pro, here you go. Both of these can now be touch-first, and Apple has made sure that it is optimized to be touch-first. Hopefully that doesn't mean that they neglected the mouse and keyboard, especially since they've had a lot of time to perfect that on the Mac. 
Now, sticking with Final Cut for just a little bit longer, don't worry, we'll get to Logic, you do have a few new features like Live Draw, which allows you to actually use the Apple Pencil to draw in text that can be used as overlays, and you can animate those. You can also keyframe and animate certain things that are cut out using the Neural Engine in the iPad Pros, and one of my favorite functions is that you can now use a full background cutout, basically meaning that it's a green screen without you needing to be in front of a green screen. That is super cool. And of course you can edit HDR video, which you've been able to do with Final Cut for quite some time now, but now you can do it on the Liquid Retina XDR display, which is the best display I own easily. So HDR will be very nice to play with. And if you happen to use iMovie for whatever reason on the iPad, you can import those iMovie projects directly into Final Cut, and you can take these Final Cut projects and send them over to the Mac. However, you can't send them back from the Mac, which kind of sucks. I would like to be able to do more of a, a back and forth process if I could, but I guess once you start it in one place, it's best to keep it there for some reason. You also have multicam editing, which is fantastic. Whenever I've done drum covers, that is how I edit my drum covers. I set up multiple cameras, sync them together, and there's my multicam edit. So being able to do that in a seemingly dedicated full screen interface on this new version of Final Cut is super, super cool, and I'm really excited to try that out. Something else that seems to be taking advantage of the neural engine in these M series processors is fast cut automation. It seems to be a function where essentially you have a vertical video pulled from a more traditional 16 by nine video, and the system will crop it in a way that keeps whatever is supposed to be the subject of the video in frame while keeping it in that sort of vertical aspect ratio. I'm gonna have to try it out. I'm not 100% sure how it works, but in theory, it seems to be kind of cool for, I guess, TikTok or YouTube stories. So maybe I'll actually start posting more things to the Chaotic Collector. Alongside this, you have voice isolation, which is something that is kind of already available on the desktop version of Final Cut, but it'll be nice to see it coming into the new iPad version of Final Cut. And you can also film directly in Final Cut using your iPad's camera. I don't think you should do that because, well, you'd be filming with an iPad, but I guess if you really needed a pickup shot and the only thing you had was an open Final Cut project on your iPad, you have that option. There is, of course, a whole lot more, but there's only two more that I am extremely excited about, which is new titles and music and the ability, coming soon apparently, to use third-party plugins. New titles and transitions and new sounds are always super nice to see because, well, we haven't seen them in quite a long time, but something that Apple also seems to be adding with the sounds is background tracks that you can extend and it will organically extend it to however long you make the video. I already have a soundtrack that I play underneath of this, but if I was desperate for some free music, or at least some music that is licensed, I would be more than happy to use something like this. So I think that's really cool, especially for folks who are sort of up and coming and haven't had years to build up some sort of background music library like I have. Definitely a useful tool. And of course, new titles and transitions are always cool and I'm just excited to see what they're gonna be because having been in the process of making a few new channels recently, I'm desperate for some new titles that are extremely customizable so I don't have to spend so many hours staring at custom keyframes in freaking Motion Pro. <sighs> so yeah, new titles would be very nice. I can't wait to try it. Also, hopefully they come to the Mac version. And speaking of things that are on the Mac version, my third-party plugins, I use a ton of them. This Zoom, this Zoom Out, this whatever the heck this is, my end title, all of these are made with third-party plugins. And so it doesn't seem like these third-party plugins are available right at launch. However, it does say coming soon, which is good because my editing style lives and dies off of a lot of the plugins that I use right now. So. I'm really hoping that they will be here sooner rather than later, but the fact that they're there is super nice because I have spent, again, many, many years collecting plugins and spending hundreds of dollars getting plugins to just get that vibe that I'm really looking for in my videos. So hopefully they'll be here sooner than later. Fingers crossed. Alrighty, so that's it for Final Cut. So now we're gonna get into Logic. And again, this can run on many, many things. However, I'll be curious to see 
if there are limitations because, well, I know what logic can do and you can very easily overwhelm some machines if you're not careful. But this one is definitely gonna be optimized for the iPads. How much, we will see. But either way, just like Final Cut Pro, this has been optimized with touch first. And of course you can hook up a keyboard accessory, the typing kind, not the piano kind, or maybe the piano kind, but more specifically, if you hook up a keyboard, you can use key commands, which is good because I also use key commands almost exclusively in Logic Pro, just like I do in Final Cut. But touch first is kind of nice. Also with it being touch first, this means that you can do things like touch to play with beat loops, piano keyboards, the actual piano keyboards this time, instead of using a typing keyboard to play the piano, which I've done many a time. And you can use touch for editing plugin tiles, which they have in this, which is good because that is not just a big thing for Logic, but a huge thing for any video creation software. So having a ton of plugins is super nice. As for third party plugins, I'm not sure how that's gonna go with these. We haven't seen that yet, but I am kind of excited to see where that'll go. And just like how you can pull iMovie projects into the new version of Final Cut, you can also pull GarageBand projects into the new version of Logic. This is actually potentially gonna be more useful, at least for the people I know, because I know more people who use GarageBand on the iPad than people who use iMovie on the iPad Pro. So we'll see, but it's still nice to have. Also, alongside keyboard functionality, they did add Apple Pencil functionality with Logic, which in this instance seems to be a way of adding keyframes, potentially for volume or pitch adjustment or maybe tempo adjustment, though I can't imagine drawing a tempo would be super easy. I don't know, but it actually looks really cool because I know I've spent a ton of time doing volume keyframes between verse to chorus and mixing harmonies to make sure that certain key points accent with higher volume and then lower back down and yeah it just looks like it'll be super nice to draw some of those instead of having to click add raise click lower yeah super excited to try it out also i'm super curious to see how directly touch interfacing with the equalizer for different instruments will be because i've used logic pro remote which is essentially just a way of pairing your ipad up to logic when it's open on your mac and adjusting volume sliders, things like that. But I've never really used it for equalizer work. But in this case, you can actually just touch the equalizer and slide things around. So I'll be curious to try that out. I'm really excited because I've been doing a lot more work with equalizers and just recordings in general over on the uh, covers and commentary, which you can check out right there. I do some stuff over there, you should check it out. But either way, I'm excited to try that out. And of course, with this being Logic Pro, we're gonna have live loops. They've got a thing called Beat Breaker, which I don't think I've ever used. We've got drum machines, samples, tons of stuff. And we finally get, just like in Final Cut, an update to our sound library. Thank you. This has been something that I'm sure a lot of people had wanted for a very long time, considering that I don't remember the last time any sound samplers or music libraries have been updated with either Final Cut or Logic. So we're finally getting that. It just took them moving the entire suite onto the iPad. Again, hopefully it also makes its way to the Mac. And speaking of making it to the Mac, Logic does actually seem to be able to take a project from the Mac to the iPad and back. It's called Round Trip. It does actually seem to allow you to go both directions. I don't know what the difference is between the two, why Final Cut can't do it and why Logic can, but it seems to be possible, so that's nice. So that was a lot of features, and most of those I am extremely excited for on both programs. But now we're going to get into the things that kind of concern me, because this is where my excitement kind of goes from up here to still kind of high, but more down here, if this is the bottom, uh, for a couple reasons. Two of the biggest ones are the price, or rather the way they're pricing it, and something specific to Final Cut that I'm sure some editors will understand and others might not. We'll start out with the second one because it's more specific to my workflow and I'm not as concerned about pricing, but I can go on and on about it if I'm not careful. And I don't want this video to be too long. So the thing that is very crucial to my workflow with Final Cut is where I save my projects. And according to iJustine, who had hands on with this on an early event thing, I guess, she mentioned that the projects will have to be imported directly onto the iPad storage. Now, that doesn't seem like a big deal. However, you have to keep in mind two things. Number one, I, and a lot of editors that I know, edit their entire projects on external media, and it never 
actually touches the internal storage of the device they're editing on. My main rig is literally reliant on two one terabyte external SSDs for the full edit from start to finish. So if it has to be imported onto the iPad, that can be a big problem because number one, these iPads, some of the models that this run on, they come with as little as 64 gigabytes of storage. You can fill that up pretty quick if you're not careful. In fact, I still have about 96 gigs free of 128 on my personal iPad Pro, and my projects can be upwards of 30 gigs to 50 gigs per project. So not being able to move it to external storage is really gonna suck. Now, of course, this is going to be the first time that we have ever had Final Cut on the iPad and Logic for that case as well. And hopefully that means that there will be room for improvement. There will be time for them to implement external storage support. But at the time of launch, it seems like that will not be a thing. I don't know if that is the same case for Logic Pro, but if Apple is Apple, it probably will be the same case. But hopefully this is just a launch thing and down the road we will get external storage support for both programs because I don't want to have to clear my iPad out constantly immediately after finishing up a project. That would just not be fun. And now with that out of the way, the only thing that I'm not happy about with Logic Pro and the other thing I'm not happy about with Final Cut Pro is the pricing, kind of. Don't get me wrong, I don't think it should be a free program. I paid the full price for every single one of my applications, $200 for Logic, 50 for Compressor, 50 for Motion, and about 300 for Final Cut Pro. But I paid all of those once when I first got into college, and I've had that same license since. This version of these programs is going to be a monthly or yearly option, meaning that you pay $5 a month or $50 a year. I really wish that there was just a one-time license option for these programs just because LumaFusion did it and even DaVinci Resolve, if you want to buy the studio version, has a one-time license. And they didn't do that for Final Cut or Logic. I don't know why, but I think that the price is reasonable if it meets what I am expecting and what a lot of professionals are expecting, which is a no compromises version of the professional application that we have become accustomed to on the Mac properly and efficiently ported over to the iPad. That's my hope. However, I know again, this is the first time we've seen these programs on the iPad. So there will probably be some hurdles to overcome. There will probably be some growing pains. And I think if I were to guess, Early on, it's probably not gonna feel like it's worth the value, and it's probably gonna come down in price to get more people on board, and that'll be about the time that it will become a pretty close resemblance to what is already on the Mac. That's just my guess, I'm hoping I'm wrong, but yeah, $50 a year or $5 a month. I'm probably gonna get the year of Final Cut just because I know that I'm gonna use it either way and I'll just grow with the pain. Um, I might do monthly on Logic though, because I don't know if I'll use it too frequently on an iPad, since most of my stuff is, is stationary. Either way, I think this is the first time ever that I've had a video become outdated before I even posted it. But that aside, I'm actually really excited to see how these programs are when they come out. Are they exactly what we were hoping for? Will there be some growing pains? Or, you know, are they just not quite what we were really hoping for? I'm curious to know, and I'm curious to know what you all think. Leave some comments down below. Do you think the price is worth it? Do you think it'll be worth it when it comes out? Do you think they'll be ready? Do you think there'll be updates? All that, leave them in the comments down below. On your way down there, maybe hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Definitely make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And I have a bunch of links down in the description, including one for my merch. This isn't my merch, but I make merch. You can check it out down there. And I've got some other channels you can check out as well. So all that down below. And aside from that, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.